we're now going to cover um, the idea of using functions as data structure. And this is really just um, an implication of being able to, when you create a function, it actually captures whatever values are declared above. And we saw that when we introduced the idea of declaring um, nested uh, values. Sorry, nested def nested functions, right? So if you recall, uh, actually, let me now wreck it. Funks as data structures. Code. So now we have this example. And what I wanted to show you is, um, even before we start that, so if you recall, we had laying rec what we did was we had a function definition that was called count uh, up to or something and it had a n or down to maybe it was down to and then what we did was um let's see if i remember uh you did n and then count down two and you would do minus n one oh no up to right so that was the trick because this one you can very easily do it recursively but what we want to do is a uh, up to and we have a low and a high what we do is cons low and then we do count up to and then what we do is um plus low one right and the same high uh, and then what we had was conditional and then uh, if the low is greater or equal than the high, uh, then you're done and you just do list of low. Otherwise you return uh, the whole list. You add one, right? Uh, and then you would do count up two and you would do one, 10 and this return all right so you do one two three four five ten so then what we did was we defined the function count up to one two and then we did high some number n and what that did was uh, count up two and then one two n right and then we just did count one two ten and that returns um, one to ten, right? And then what we realized was, well, we because this count up to is only used internally, we shouldn't make it um, a public a public value. And now we learned that we could just write provide, uh, and we could say, well, you can hide it if you just write count one two, uh, and that would be one way of going about and hiding this function. But then what we learned was, right, if I do wreck it, it still works. Um, but then what we've learned is, well, there's another way we could do. Well, we could create a nested definition. Um, so let's do that. And once we created this nested definition, um, now we need to remove this from here. And if we run it, um, It now shows up correctly, right? And then what we realize, well, well, this is a bit silly because we're passing high all the time, the high parameter, um, and it never changes, right? But high is whatever was given in this n, so why don't we just use that n directly? So we did that. So now we write n here, and now we see one of the benefits of being able to write a definition internally is that we can simplify its usage. So that was something. Um, probably need to fix something. Where's high? Ah, here should be n. Okay. What else? Uh, now I don't need the n here anymore. Count up to. Here you don't need the n anymore. Okay, now it works. Um, and so, but there's something subtle here, right? Which is, it means that whenever you call count one to t two, whatever number, um, and if you do it with 20, you actually created this function twice, 
right? You create this function whenever you call this. It's just that in Racket, creating a function is something very quick, so you shouldn't be concerned about that. But basically, you created a function where um, the n is capture, right? So here, let me just call it again, right? Here, in the first call, oops, creates a count up, count up to n equals 10. And here creates a count up to n equals 20. So internally, we're creating two functions because one is capturing the n to be 10 and the second call n is 20, okay? So this is kind of similar to when you have, um, you know, a class in a programming language, object-oriented programming language, and you instantiate that class with multiple, you know, values that you pass in the constructor. This would be something very similar to that. You have a, a function, and whenever you call it, you're instantiating it, right? But uh, the values are constructed upon creation time. Okay, so now what we want to do is, this next few slides, we're going to show you the power of that. Okay, what you can do with, with uh, this idea of capturing values and returning functions. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to write a function that returns um, the number three. So I define two versions. Um, okay, I have one version that just returns the number three, and the second version takes a lambda, has zero parameters, and returns the number three. Okay. So, to obtain the value 3 in the first version, I just write 3 of 1, right? To obtain the value of the number 3 from function 3 colon do 2, I need to call it. And notice because lambda doesn't have any parameters, uh, calling it is just writing the name of the function, putting parentheses around it, okay? So now I should see... Let me kind of comment this out. Now I should see the number three printed out twice. Okay. Right, because the first one, we just assigned number three to it. Second version, let me just show what happens when he... What is bound is the lambda, right? A function declaration. Actually, a function value. The declaration creates a function value. And that is what is assigned to two. And finally, you have this example where you call this lambda that has zero parameters and you return the three. Okay, so, so far, nothing too surprising. Perhaps uh, calling a function with zero parameters is surprising, but, or unusual. Okay, so we have these two versions. So now what we want to do is, I want to generalize this. Instead of creating, um, you know, just a function that returns three, I want a function that returns n, whatever that n is. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to define a factory. Factory, well, it takes an n. What it does, it returns a lambda that when called, returns that n. Okay, and now I can create another version of three, which takes a factory and passes 10. Oops, oh, sorry, three. And now what is three? And what is three when I call it? Okay, so let's see. Actually, let me comment it out. Comment this out because you've already seen what it is. So now, if I run it here, I see that it is um, a procedure, and if I call that procedure, I get three. So the only thing I did was I just made this into a function, right? So instead parameterizing the three here, right? So now I have a factory of of numbers that re creates a function dynamically. So whenever I call factory n, it creates a new lambda that assigns n to whatever argument you gave it. Okay, so if I do factory of four, right? Define four and I call four, I should get four, right? And 
I can also call it directly 5. If I put two parentheses, it means I'm calling outside, I'm creating the function. Second one, I'm calling the function. Okay? So this shows that you can pass different parameters, which will create a different the function, right? But since the return value is a function, we can call it directly, right? Okay, so in this case, I just created the whole thing directly. Okay, and in the next slide, I want to show you guys how we, one, implement cons. So you guys remember cons, right? So if I do cons one, three, right, it creates this pair that contains one and three. I'm going to comment all this. This is very important because this is going to show up in your homework assignment. Okay, so if I have... Um, Okay, so if you, you know that I can create this, but now the, the the remaining of the time, I want us to try to recreate this pair by using functions, just functions, no data structures. The only thing you need is a function, or to put another way, the functionality that we have. Well, functional is a terrible way of calling it, but uh, this feature of capturing values when you create a function is very powerful and with it we don't even need data structures of course we programming languages have data structures like racket has data structures as we saw we have the structs and the lists but theoretically you wouldn't need them it's just that it makes it faster if you use them okay so now let's see how would one go about and create this notion of a pair just by using functions okay so the idea is as follows you define cons right? And when you create cons, you pass it two values, x and y, or left and right, left and right. Okay, so when I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a data structure that is just a function. So if it's a function, let's call it a lambda. Okay. Um, and now this function is going to take a special parameter that I'm going to call the operation. Okay, and then it's going to have uh, a value v, Okay, and then according to the operation, if the operation is uh, left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return um, left. If the operation is uh, right, I'm going to return right. And uh, next thing I want to do, otherwise, um, I don't really care, so I'm just going to return, um, what am I going to return? Nothing. So I'm not going to even implement that case. Let's ignore that. Okay. So we have just two conditions. One case when the thing is called left and right. So if I do cons of 10, 30, sorry, 10, 20, and if I call this, I just see a procedure, right? Okay, that's weird. So how do I use it? Okay, we need to redefine what cons, uh, with car means. Car is get left, obviously. So that takes a pair, P. And what it should do is, okay, so how do I call this? Well, this is a function that takes two parameters, an operation and a V. And I want it to return L, so that means I need to call... Oh, actually, I don't need this V. Um, so... I wanted to return the left hand side, so I want to do. Um, do, do, do I want to do. C. I want to call this pair, because the pair is a function, right? And I want I want to pass the operation that makes it return the L. Okay, so how do I do that? I pass left. Okay. Okay, and now I want to do something. CDR. 
which returns the right hand side. P. Okay. P. Right. Okay. So I have this, I have that. And now let's see if this works. Cons 10 check equal, right? Car of cons should be 10 check equal. CDR oh, it's 20. And this should be 20. See where did I do something wrong? Oh, I didn't define check equal. Oh, I didn't define rack unit. New rack unit. Require rack unit. Okay, so let me create a pair. Uh, pair ten twenty. Create this pair here. Okay, P ten twenty pair ten twenty. Okay. So as you know, pair ten twenty is just a procedure, a new one, and if I do pair ten twenty. And I call it, and I pass left. Look at what happens. I get 10, okay, 10, 20, right. I get 20, right? Because when I created this lambda, I actually, um, it actually returned, um, Sorry, when we create this, uh, when we declare, this is a function declaration. Once it's created, it's actually capturing the value of these two variables. So it's storing them here and here. And when I call them afterwards with left and right, because this is the conditional that we set here, we can get uh, 10 and 20. Okay. We could even go crazy and we could, uh, let's create a, a broken cons. So we could do define uh, add to left okay and I take a pair and I add I want to add a value V one thing I could do is okay so now I want to do something that when it takes P okay so I want to do so you can think of this basically this is actually an interesting idea is um, at least to me is the idea that when you program this way, you're kind of almost implementing an object-oriented way. And in fact, in the beginning of object-oriented programming, this was one of the proposals. You can think of the cons or this lambda that you create as something that is the object, um, the, like the this, and uh, the op to be the method that you want to call. Um, so in that case, uh, if I wanted to add Let's say I wanted to add a new method called um, that whenever you do, what could we do? Okay, when, when given a pair, I want to add to the left V. Okay, so I want to do, I have um, an operation here. And when, okay, so if it's equal to uh, left, okay, what I want to do is plus um p left i want to call the method under quotation mark left and i want add v okay otherwise otherwise i just call uh, the operation on the pair itself okay so what we're seeing here is that um given a p which is again this function that represents a pair we're kind of extending a method or we adding an we're adding a new method to that uh, object so uh, we're extending sorry we're extending the object in this way so let's say i have this and i want to do define let me make it the things a bit clearer p to be 2020 okay so one way of adding p to 2020 is by 
doing add to left of p 10 20 and i add 10. actually let me make it 15 so it's a bit clear what's going on okay so i add 5 5 to 10 5 plus 10 this becomes 15. now i want to do car of this and then I want to do car okay see what I broke here con p left this is p up where's the error coming up expect it to and I pass it one Oh, this is fine. Uh, does not match. So equal. Oh, wait. Silly me. I have to say that the op is left. Okay. Okay. So now let's see what we did. So here so far everyone understood, I hope. Uh, and now what I did was I showed you guys extending a pair uh, or extending the behavior of operation left of a given pair, a given pair. Okay. So what we did was now we are redefining what left means. And because we have access to the old pair, what we do is we return the old value. We add V, right? And now I show you guys that if I define, if I call add to left and I pass a regular pair that I had before 10 20 and I say add to left 5 what I get is let me clear everything what I get is 15 and 10 so we added the 5 there so I'm using the same original car and CDR. I didn't change those. What I changed was the behavior of the pair so that it adds to the left a certain number. Okay, and I hope this inspires you to do the, the first uh, assignment of homework one, oh, homework two.